Hey there, friends. My name is Rabbit, and thanks for joining me for episode 153 of our post-game exploration of Jade Cocoon 2's bonus content. In our last episode, we were continuing to make our journey through the older water forest, or the older levels of the water forest, with the hope of reaching the level 5 water forest, which is known as Water Tour. We're pretty close to it. We're presently on the third area of Water Return, the third island, I should say, of Water Return. So with Without further ado, let's just go ahead and run forward, get into this fight so that we can try to blaze through these last couple of islands and get ourselves set up to, at least by episode 154, be in new uncharted territory. So that is the goal. As for personal things that we've kind of chit-chatted about and bantered about, I've shared with you guys some of the more exciting things that have already transpired in 2018. Granted, we're only three days into it. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold. That obviously is not the exciting news or anything positive to share, but I did decide to go ahead and just, you know what, I'm going to take... A half day of PTO so I can get some recording done, try to get my head on, and then I'll go in for the last couple of hours of the day and bang out all of the work that I would have just felt too ill to do in the morning. So that's kind of why I'm here on a fucking Wednesday, chit-chatting with you guys, playing some Jade Cocoon 2. And I figured it's been a while since we've knocked out another recording session, but I did a better job this time, as promised, than the previous batch that we knocked out. There was a several month the gap maybe gosh friends was it close to six months I don't even recall it might not have been that drastic but you get the gist that I had made an effort this time to not have there be such a delay in me knocking out some more episodes for you guys I just I guess also feel as though I don't want us to be sitting on Jade Cocoon 2 through 2018 we've had a good run with this and I know that the post game stuff I made it very clear to you guys that all of this is just like the icing on top of the cake that was this playthrough experience. I wanted us to look at all of the main story and we knocked that out in a feasible amount of time for me with all the other projects that I have going on. But I didn't want to commit to keeping this in my priority lineup because I had other games I wanted to play. I wanted to knock out Grandia 2. I am like 40 some episodes, maybe a little bit more than that. I can't remember. We're close to 40-ish episodes into Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth. So I anticipate I'm about halfway done with that project. I just really wanted to be knocking out more things. And the reason why I say all this is to lead into something I suggested I wanted to talk about in this episode, which is goals for 2018. Things that I really just want to be spending more time on and I want to be focusing on more. And one of them is the channel. I know I've shared throughout the various vlogs that I've done and random Let's Plays. I've just sprinkled this topic across random episodes that I feel like with my channel, as much as I have dedicated myself to trying to get through games and trying to spend time talking to you guys, not only to get to know you, but also to respond to inquiries you have and suggestions that you have for me, I am so busy with my real life that I feel like my channel has always been kind of a, a very, very side thing. And I don't want that to be the case. Like... Ideally, in a perfect world, I would love if this channel was self-sustaining to the point where it provided at least like a part-time income for me so I didn't have to work full-time. And it's not that I dislike what I'm doing. Like, I love teaching. I love research. I love education. I, I, I just, these are things that fulfill me and I would never not do these sorts of of things. I would never not have at least like 25 hours of my life be devoted to to teaching, whether it's just instructing two or three college or community college classes, or, you know, it's me working again in like vocational rehabilitation where I'm doing adult education type work for a state agency. And that could easily be a part-time gig, you know, where it's like 20 hours, 25 hours, maybe even 30 hours, you know, it's like you work three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just something like that, where 25 to 30 hours of my life is devoted to my true vocation, but then that still leaves me that part-time where I can play this game, or other games, I should say, to my, to my leisure, and be able to grow the channel at the capacity that I think it has the potential for. And I'm not one who really compares myself to others. Like I know there are people who are far more bloodthirsty for fame than I am and so they'll do whatever it takes to 
get some sort of foothold of fame, even though most people don't ever achieve it. So they end up acting like assholes for no reason. But, you know, that's its own side story. But that's really not me. My goal is not necessarily fame. I just would love to be able to commit to this channel and devote enough time to this channel to where it can grow at the rate that I know it has the potential for is what I already said, but kind of like the gist of of what I'm I'm attempting to convey, the heart of what I'm attempting to convey. I really feel like part of this channel's limitation is that I have several gaps where I just can't upload. And it's not because I don't necessarily have the time to record, but I don't always have the time to edit things together. And I know I've had some wonderful friends online and in person who have offered like, hey, as long as you sit down and record once a week and get like seven episodes recorded, if you just shoot the raw shit over to me, I'll edit it, everything for you and send it back. And I appreciate that, but that's not what I want. Like I want to do it if that makes sense. Like, I, it's not that I don't want to collaborate or I don't want to rely on people for anything because God knows I've appreciated contributions many of you have made through donations or through Patreon, even as little as like a dollar a month, you know? Like, it sounds so insignificant, but over the course of a year, you know, that's $12 that you gave me that can go into that pot of money that I have that allows me to buy games that I can play for you. Or it at least gives me a little bit of wiggle room with uncovering gems that I normally wouldn't pay for because I don't have like the extra funds for it myself. So I have a lot of games that I've just held on to over the years, but then there are titles that we've lost or were stolen or for whatever reason. I'm sure I've talked about it at some point in this Let's Play, but there are some games that are expensive and I would love to play them for you. And I just, it's not that I couldn't make a way to afford them, but I've been transparent with you guys already that I'm the sole provider in my household. Like Andrew is still in school, like pursuing his doctoral stuff, like his PhD. So he is in a doctoral program and like he's currently considering, does he want to take a step back and get a second master's and then resume the PhD? So Andrew's going to be in school, if not for at least another three years to finish his PhD, but he might be in there for like another five years. So two years for a different master's and then the three years devoted to the PhD, which is totally fine. Like, it's not like we're hungry or starving. Like, I come from pretty much nothing. So me being the only one working and us living as two off my income, it's feasible. And I would never, ever complain about that. I know I have it so much better than a lot of my family that's not in the U.S. And even some people that are here and are living paycheck to paycheck. We're about a step or two beyond that. So your funds are exclusively set aside for the channel related purchases so that the money that I do have can go into my personal life stuff. So I guess the point of all of this, and why did I come here? I need to go to Kiki Nack and Company so I can sell some of this shit. And then we are, as I had hoped, ready to go into the level five for us. So hang on. First order of business. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Just take my shits. I've got a few things. I will keep the mug. Actually, I'm not keeping the mug warts. I will get rid of the cute gems. And I know I'm going to get better books. So I'm just going to get rid of most of these. I'll keep like one. 18 things is probably good, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And then I'm going to put these cognets into storage. I don't know why I hadn't done that before. I guess I just didn't take the time to look at my inventory and assess what needs to come with Kahu and what needs to be left behind. But that's okay. Better late than never. <clears throat> oh my god, my warehouse is full. Well, I had better start doing something about that. I, it's because I have all these extra fucking eggs that I don't really need, but I don't want to hatch any of them. And like all these fucking shirts and fans, but I didn't know. Are these going to be tied to a side quest? Are they just here for selling? I don't know. Who knows, you guys? Whatever. I'm not going to worry too much about it. If I got to get rid of anything, it'll be these eggs because God knows I'm not thinking about raising that many new divine beasts at all. I just ain't nobody got time for it. Or I guess technically we have time for it, but ain't nobody got the energy for it. So, you know, I got to say, I'm a little disappointed with the cutscenes we got. We devoted, what, 150, 151, 152. So three episodes. I had to actually think about that. Like, is this the fourth video I'm recording? We devoted so much time to running back through those old forests and we had two cutscenes with Cure and one with Nam? Like what the fuck is that all about? I mean granted we were able to get some of our beasts um, to 
evolve further. So that's always nice. Uh, we got a couple of things which added a little bit of extra yen into our pocketbooks, but that wasn't needed. I thought we would have a little bit more dialogue exchange happening with Cure, but I guess they didn't really do much with her. There's There hasn't even been an explanation as to why she's human. Like we know Elrim's involved and it had something to do with her being reborn and her transforming. And it was a wish she'd always had. I don't know, whatever, not gonna worry about it. So back to what I was saying, that I appreciate so much those of you who have devoted your time to watching my videos, because I do get some ad revenue, not that much, but I get some. And then those of you who do contribute through Patreon, that money does go towards me buying new games. But the, the problem has been, I just haven't had the time, I think, to put into the channel as much as I would like. And that isn't to say that I wanna ever be that person that's just home all day playing video games. I don't think that'd be stimulating for me. Like, I didn't get a master's degree just to sit at home playing video games all day. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just not my personal goal. And I do have some intentions of possibly continuing my own education. I've been thinking about possibly pursuing my own PhD in public health or getting my own second master's in um, counseling or pursuing a, a license in being a licensed clinical social worker um, and then taking that so that I can work more in mental health instead of just physical health. Granted, I can... I have been involved in a lot of mental health projects, but it's been exclusively from a research standpoint, not from an active like practitioner standpoint. I'm just not equipped to do that. Like I don't have any counseling background. I have it to a minor extent where working in dietetics, I was involved in like nutrition and wellness counseling, but it wasn't like therapeutic counseling. So which is so much as it was physical health counseling. So that I'm prepared to do, but there's often a mental health component tied into that. And I found it exceedingly fulfilling to listen to people talk about their problems, you know, validating their feelings and sometimes providing some guidance, some counsel, some insight into circumstances they would have otherwise been unable to kind of see. So anyway, that's kind of like long term plans. And maybe it's not anything that I would do even in the next 10 years because I do want to have a family and I feel like. I'm happy with the path for the most part <laughs> that I have taken. Like I like the work that I do and I feel Andrew and I have just such a good thing going. I'm not one of those people that feels like I have to be the best of the best and I have to have as many letters and titles behind my name as possible. I really don't care. You're not taking those things with you into the grave. What impact you leave behind is primarily going to come from relationships that you've had with people and who you were as a human being. So that has always and will always continue to be my my focus, like what I do with other people, how I direct my behavior and, and emotions towards other people. Like those are the things that I care about as like number one or number two. So with all that being said, I love my vocation and, you know, like education, research, and just all the other work that I do and little side goals that I have for myself. These are things that will always be like minor priorities. And I feel like because of that, the channel, because it, I know it will always be only like a part-time thing for me, I guess I just, I haven't done my absolute best in building this up. I feel like I laid a decent foundation where, you know, slowly and over time, I'll finish like two games to three games a year, but I know I could do better. Like there still was that two years that I took off when I was in graduate school. Like, yeah, I don't think anyone can fault me for putting my education before playing video games for, for very little, you know, being given back to me for two years. But when you think about it, I could have played at least one game like finished one game a year. So two things could have still been added to the channel that I could have done for you guys. But I just completely removed myself from it because I was like, eh, I don't feel like focusing on this while doing all this other side stuff. Here, why are you doing this? Oh my, Cuffy. What do you mean by this? Aren't you doing it too? But sure, I'm sure you could live a more normal life if you wanted. Huh? What an odd boy. Don't ask boorish questions. I do it because I like it. I'm having much more fun since I came here. Made some new friends, too. How about you, Puffy? You're not doing it for the money, right? Me? Uh, 
I guess I'm like you, Kira. See? So we are alike, you see? Uh, I guess. I don't know why Kahu doesn't just say, like, in your former life, all you wanted to do was live with humans and be normal. Now that you are a human and you have the chance to be normal, you're choosing to just run around. This is something we learned, to help people and meet other people. Girl, you can go to the club for that. You don't have to be out here fucking around with these beasts. Come on, Cure. Come on, Cure. All right, well, whatever. For... For what it's worth, that was somewhat of an interesting exchange, I guess. I suppose it's establishing that we still have a lot in common with Cure. Granted, maybe not as much as we did when she was a beast herself, but whatever. I'm not going to question it. So, the point of everything that I've been kind of expressing is that I, even though I have had legitimate reasons for not being as involved in the channel as others... I think that I still, in 2018, can do a little bit better than I have in the past. Like, I want to try completing games more. And even if I can't guarantee a video goes up every single day, I really want to eliminate the situation where I'll sometimes go two or three weeks without any content at all. Now, again, there's always been a reason. It's never like I have videos and I'm just too lazy to edit them. It's 99% of the time that work is crazy during that season and I didn't plan ahead accordingly. And so like I'm working anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day, like if it's just like a busy time. And when I come home, I either have to then cook or do some cleaning or something else. And it just, it just doesn't get budgeted into my time for the week to get anything edited. Even though I sometimes can squeeze in time to uh, like record, there's just, the editing takes so long because the videos have to process and blah, blah, blah. And I don't even do complicated editing, you guys. Like, I kind of learned earlier on that I don't have the patience for that. And I feel like at this point and the size of my channel, there's not as much, there's not as much that you get from that. Like, I've spent a lot of time before editing, like, the top tens, for example, or the reviews. Like, they take so much more time than Let's Playing, and I don't get nearly as much back from those as I do from finishing an actual series which is fine like I do the reviews in the top tens because I like what I'm talking about but I like playing games too and I think for me I just I looked at HC Bailey and I've followed his content for a while and I really respect his channel I think more than a lot of even other content creators because I feel like he knows what he likes he knows what he's good at and he sticks with it. He doesn't try to offer variety just for the sake of doing it or because other people are doing it and that's what you should do. He knows what he's good at. He knows he's great at making these, these guides and walkthroughs. People like that about him and they come to him for that. If you're looking for a channel that does heavily edited slapstick, in my opinion, sometimes cringy humor or cringy content, then you shouldn't be watching H.C. Bailey. That's what it comes down to. He shouldn't be expected to change because you have a short attention span or because you like something different than what he's offering. And I think I listened to an extent to really stupid, impressionable people who feel like catering to as big of an audience as possible is more important than being yourself or securing yourself in a niche or... You know, to me, what's most important is just being happy and having a good time. So I enjoy things like the top tens, and I definitely have plans for more. I enjoy the reviews, definitely have lots of scripts written and plans for more. But at the end of the day, I think very much like Chugga Conroy or H.C. Bailey, I really just like playing games, talking about the games, analyzing them as I go. Like, yeah, sometimes that might translate into me making a more structured review like I've done in the past. But again, I almost feel like what you get back from the amount of time you invest in creating those, it's just, it doesn't feel as good, at least not at this point. Maybe in the future, it will be more worth it when I have an audience that enjoys that, but I feel like most of the people that come to me and watch my videos, they come because they either like how I create my walkthroughs, so Star Ocean the Second Story and Legend of Lagaya are my two main like 100% guides. I have done actual like detailed this is how you unlock everything and where everything is in the game for other titles, but those are the two where I I would definitely say like I uncover everything, I go into everything and I show you secrets that most people wouldn't know unless you're nuts like me and have played the games as many times as I have. So I think a lot of people come to me for that kind of content and they're not here to watch me 
rate or review like the top 10 waifus in whatever. Even though I think that'd be a lot of fun to make and I'm sure some of you might enjoy that. You're not here for that. Oh my god, you've been waiting. Well, I'm here now, friend. I'm here now. So, with all of that being said, I feel like in 2018, I want to kind of focus and I want to do what I love and do what I think I do best. And that is either making walkthroughs or just semi-blindly slash blindly experiencing a game, telling you guys stories, establishing rapport with all of you, and just getting through the... Oh, thank God! We got the next version of Tishu here. Holler! I, I just think that's, at the end of the day, what I always intended for this channel to be. And anything extra that comes along, it's just a bonus, right? So I don't want people to look at it as though I'm like a one-trick pony or that I don't want you to have variety, but that's not why I'm here. I'm not here to offer you all of these different things. I don't want to do a million things at a mediocre level. I want to do one or two things at a great level, if that makes sense. So... I'm thinking for 2018, one of the things I really want to do for myself, again, it's not to, you know, promise that there will be a video every single day because that's not going to happen. I work far too much to ever even commit to something like that. And at that point, this doesn't become fun for me. And then I'm basically undermining the, the true goal of all of this in the first place. And that is to have a good time and share my love and my joy of video games with all of you. So that I never will throw away. I want this to be fun. And the day this really stops being fun for me, I have no problem just walking away because I think life is too short. I've had a lot of loss. My brother has died. My father has died, like both very young and unexpectedly. And I, I have just lived a life where I, I've realized pretty quickly that none of this really matters. What matters is who you are and who you love and who loves you. And I just think too many people are too concerned about fitting in or being popular or running away from their problems or pretending to be something that they're not, which only prolongs their suffering because the persona they put out there is not any true indication of what they're experiencing or what they're feeling. And you know what? Whatever. That's their problem. I can't live anyone else's life but my own. So I want this to always remain fun. But I want to be consistent and I want to grow the channel and I want to not necessarily have a, a bigger following just for the sake of having greater numbers, but I want this channel to grow to the point where it can be somewhat self-sustaining so that maybe in two or three years I can look for a more part-time role. So maybe just teaching at a community college or just becoming an adjunct professor somewhere where I'm, I'm only teaching like four classes. So, you know, it's not as grave of a commitment as, you know, full-time and, oh, here's the shit I was looking for, Storm Song. We'll actually head back after we're done in this area because, oh my God, that guy came out of nowhere. We will want to sell some shit We'll want to turn in the item that we got that fulfilled our contract. And we have uh, some new coma that we can go ahead and turn in as well for cash. So that will be the plan. Uh, and then I will kind of run back through this island on my own. Hopefully there will be another scene with Cure. I fucking doubt it. We're on island number one of the brand new level five forest. So I'm not anticipating there will be anything else really to discuss with her here. I mean, we didn't really share that much with her as it stands already. Either way, friends, I I guess to lay out kind of what my expectations are for myself, I want to eliminate the long gaps. So I guess I want to just do a better job of planning ahead because for the most part, I can predict when work is going to be nuts. Like sometimes it catches you off guard. Like with my, whoa, he got me from behind. That was a bad choice. I was trying to run into that ogre vine. Sometimes it does catch me off guard. Like if, you know, the director of my department randomly comes in and she's like, hey, this thing needs to be done ASAP. So I'm needing you to travel to this event in seven days. So then I basically have seven days to build like a whole presentation and get a bunch of materials gathered together and figure out my, like what I'm going to be teaching for this random conference that they just fucking signed me up for. And usually it's on someone else's behalf, like the poor planning that took place and why I end up in that situation. And it's fine, you know, that kind of comes with this territory of work, you know, like sometimes shit just rolls down and it falls on you. Whatever. I'm not going to get into that. Like, 
I've definitely had my spiels about how I think sometimes undeserving people get in positions of leadership and it drives me nuts because other people suffer because you fucking suck at your job or don't care and you're just rolling in the dough. But whatever, it's fine. Not going to worry about that right now. But what I'm trying to say is while there might occasionally be an unexpected ball drop regarding what I need to be working on and where I'm going to be going. Most of the time I can see it ahead of time. Like I see, okay, I'm going to have to be teaching a bunch of adult education things or I'm going to need to be working on educational materials for this project and I have a couple of weeks to do it, which is plenty of time, but I know the weeks leading up to it will be nuttier because there's going to be maybe some revisions that the director expects or I'm going to have additional projects randomly handed to me while I'm finalizing other things. So I know that I'm going to be working more like 60 hours for two weeks at the end of insert random month. So I can see those things oftentimes ahead of time. So what I want to do better in 2018 is maybe recording less but spending more time actually editing. Editing is the part that I hate the most. So I'll sit down and record like for an hour a morning for like three days. So let's say if I get three episodes recorded over the course of three days, that's nine videos. Like that's a lot of videos that I have just sitting there, but I don't ever edit them because I don't really have the patience or the time. But what I could do instead, maybe one day I record the three videos, the next day I edit one. Then the day after that I edit another and like just slowly get videos out so that even if you're only getting a video every other day, you're not sitting on like two weeks where you get nothing at all just because I don't have the time to, to edit all of them in one fell swoop and get them all uploaded in one fell swoop. But like, there's still no reason why I can't get you one video every three days. You know what I mean? Like I can edit one and then it can go up that night. And then maybe the next day I don't have time to edit it, but that evening maybe I can. And so then the following day, you guys get the picture. So that's kind of like one goal that I have for myself is to... to normalize my editing to recording and uploading ratio because I hate the editing part it's just such a commitment and if I don't have the free time like I'd rather spend that time doing something more productive which is valid but if it's at the expense of you guys getting any content for two weeks then it just it doesn't make sense to wait until I have time to edit all the videos in one go because you could have just watched them all over the course of that two weeks even if they were scattered and they're being released so that's goal number one Goal number two, as just kind of a, a general, hopefully, consequence of me doing a better job of getting things out faster, is us completing more games. I have so many games that I want to be playing for you guys. I still have like a couple Sega Saturn titles that I want to play, but for the PlayStation in particular, I, I really want to knock out like Lunar, Silver Star, Story Complete. I want to play L Lunar 2. I want to play uh, Brave Fencer Musashi, Threads of Fate. Like there are so many PlayStation 1 games that mean so much to me and I would love nothing more than to showcase some of them for you. And some of them would be more semi-blind. I have like 15 games right now that are just like waiting to go. Like I haven't made thumbnails or anything for them, but I've known for at least the last two years, like I want to play this next, or at least in the, the batch of the next two or three games that I explore on the channel. But I feel like the pace has just not been as rapid as I would ideally like, just due to my work commitments and things like that. So eliminating how big the gaps are between content at random points in the year. I would say it only happens maybe three times a year, but that's still, if it's like two weeks each time, that's a month and a half or six weeks out of the whole year where you guys get no content. Like that's a lot of like six weeks, like you guys, six weeks. That is, that's, those are so many episodes. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm sure you know what I mean. I don't need to ask you to validate a very simple concept here, but you get what I'm saying. That's 42 episodes that, holy shit, just holy shit, you guys. 42 episodes, that's like, that could be easily an entire like 15-hour Let's Play or 20-hour Let's Play or half of a 40-hour Let's Play that I basically don't get done each year. So want to start there, want to tackle that and be a bit better about how I'm handling all of that. So 
let me not draw on further about that. I will explain a little bit more of other things that I'd like ideally to happen. Maybe they won't happen in 2018. Maybe they won't even happen in 2019. But things that I would still ultimately like to see for my channel, I will explain in our next episode. I want to quickly get through all this, let you see the info. HP up one? That's bullshit for the talent you get or the skill or whatever, the passive. Fucking, that's lame. That sucks. That's horrible. Oh my god, that, yeah, that blows some humongous donkey dicks, but it is what it is. Let's sell our shit, then we will hand over the contract. I want to shop, take my shit. I will get rid of two of these. I don't know, one of this. I don't know why I have this. I just need one. Oh wow, full resurrect on one beast. Hey, uh, that's kind of cool. Do I, I don't know if I've, huh. That's worth 900 yen. That's not a fucking joke, you guys. That's amazing. Okay, I think though, I think that's all I really need. The shields, I'm keeping that. I don't know if I really need these. The sharp book, meh. Increasing defense, whatever. I'll keep that. That could be useful. The full heal is pretty fucking good. Holy crap. I'll sell one of them. Just for funsies. Actually, I'll sell this too. <laughs> because I can. Alright, with that being done. Oh, guys, we're still a bit broke. Oh, the struggle is always so real. Last but not least, we're going to head to the lounge. Finalize this job. Collect our reward. Pump the points into or the I think their life extracts into someone let's see what other postings there are right. I just finished it right now seriously you are a pro when you do it you do it we gotta get what's coming though of course there's a reward thank you how about the next job that's what I'm saying all right give me my fucking left life extracts no one really cares about the rep. All right, we got three of them. Holy shit. Boost the max HP. I don't know. Like, I don't really care about... I mean, I love Merrick. Don't get me wrong. But he's already maxed out. So there's a point where he's not going to be... He's not going to be used. So, I don't know. I guess let's give it to Fizzy. Oh, my God. It went up by four. By four. So that's eight total. Wow. He got 12 HP from that. I don't know if that was really that good. I... Whatever. It's okay. It was something. Present delivery. Uh, we're not going into wind sport. Deliver my present into water tour. Please deliver this to Cure in the water tour. I'm sure she'll like this gift box. Can you do it for 2400 yen? It's not really a lot of money, but whatever. Lightbugic. Don't care. Okay. We will take this we might as well we got to go back through water tour anyway so meh it is what it is and at least it'll force us to interact with uh, gil what are you doing if i could discover a law of merging i think it would be much more interesting but there seems to be many intermingled elements i don't know what the fuck he's talking about but lord lavar you were the last one to see him alive were you not uh, yeah, I did the best I could. Hey, you angry? No, it was his desire to be defeated by you. That is what I believe. Let's all work together and fight against that force. Oh, hair of Lord Lavant's soul. Lead the fight against Karma. Let us survive. Yes, this is a new holy war. Comrades, fight together. These leaf beast hunters take this shit hella seriously. Okay, friends. Well, as I was starting to say, we checked the job posting, so we're ready to rock and roll in episode number 154. But I am going to go back through island number one on my own. So when we come back together, I will have dipped into all of the respective ogre vines. If there is a cutscene, I'll just bring you guys back or I'll describe it to you if it's not that important. I doubt it's going to be a big deal. So I will see you guys in a little bit when we are ready to go into the island that you hadn't seen before. So I'll see you guys there. <laughs>